Hey everybody! This video is going to go over the PowerPoint on Chapter 2, the four bases and the writing process in the Week 1 module. Um, so this chapter provides an overview of what the four bases are and then how to use the writing process to achieve those four bases. So the writing process, our book, our textbook, uh, breaks it up into four steps. Um, so step one is discovering a point, often through the use of pre-writing. Step two is then developing solid support for that point, again, often through the use of pre-writing and outlining. Step three is then organizing that support and writing a first draft. And then step four is revising and editing um, before you submit the, the, the assignment. So um, how this works in the book is our authors have developed what they call the four bases of writing. Think of it like the four touchstones. Um, unity, support, coherence, and sentence skills. Okay, those are the four bases of writing. If you follow the four steps of the writing process, then you will have covered all your bases. See how that works? So if you make one point and stick to it, that was step one in the writing process. If you do that, then your writing will have unity. If you back up your point, with specific evidence, then your writing will have support. If you have organized the writing, connected all the specific evidence so that it all fits together and flows, then your writing will have coherence. And if you write clear, error-free sentences, then your writing will demonstrate effective sentence skills. So that's how the four steps work in conjunction with the four bases. If you follow each step, you will cover all four bases of writing. So that first step, coming up with a point, and then the second step, coming up with the support, uh, we said in the when we went over the four steps of the writing process that both of those steps often use pre-writing techniques to get you to where you need to be. So we're going to talk a little bit now about different pre-writing techniques. So the four main ones um, and the four that we're going to discuss are free writing, questioning, making a list, and clustering, or mapping, or webbing. It can be referred to as any of those three things. So we're going to look first at free writing, and free writing is um, really what I ask you to do in your weekly journal. Um, I give you the prompt for the weekly journal, and when you know when you're using free writing to come up with a topic or a point for a paragraph or a paper, you know you have to come up with the prompt. You have to come up with the topic. You know, but what you do is the same. So in your weekly journals, you know, I tell you to set a timer for yourself and just write nonstop for 10 minutes on the prompt I've provided. It's the same concept when you're using free writing as a pre-writing technique. You have a topic in mind and it might be a general topic. It might be kind of a big topic to begin with. And then you just start writing and see where it takes you. And you, you write, you just continuously you know, um, and without any worries, without any anxiety and without any expectations, you, you don't have to worry about grammar or mechanics or spelling or language or anything like that. Just get it all out. Then you'll go back through it afterwards and see what sticks out at you. What, where did your mind go while you were free writing? All right. Um, there is an example on page 20 of the textbook if you want to take a look at it, but it really is the same concept as what we do in our weekly journals. The second technique is questioning. 
All right. So you have an idea in mind, you have a topic in mind, um, and you generate ideas and details by asking questions, as many questions as you can think about for your subject. Um, so, you know, like the big who, what, when, where, why, how, and in what ways. Um, try to answer all the questions and try to come up with as many answers to each question. And it's, it's very much like the free writing as well, except it, it's a little more directed, has a little more structure to it. But at the same time, you can still go anywhere with your answers. Um, and asking those questions can be a very effective way of getting yourself to think about a topic from different angles. Um, we might not always ask ourselves the how <laughs> or the why or the where. And if you answer each of those questions and come up with as many answers as you can, you might come up with something unexpected, right? So questioning is our second technique example on page 22 of the book if you want to take a look at that. The third technique um, is what we call listing. It's also sometimes referred to as brainstorming, but listing I think is a, a better term because it's, <laughs> it's just exactly what you do. Um, you create a list of ideas and details related to your subject. So it is somewhat like free writing in that there's no guidelines, there's no rules, um, but in this case you know, it, it doesn't look like paragraph. It doesn't look even like sentences. It can literally be words and phrases that you just, you know, kind of bleh onto the paper. So it can be this, it's, it's the same concept as the free writing and that you just let your, your mind take you wherever it goes. Um, and you're just along for the ride, jotting things down. You're eventually going to have to go back and look at the list though and see what you came up with. And there is an example of this on page 23 of the book. The last technique is what we call clustering um, or mapping or webbing. And it's sort of a visual strategy for generating ideas. Um, so, you know, you start with the center circle, the center web, and that has your, your idea, your topic written in it. And then what's the first idea that comes to mind about that topic. Well, you draw a little line and another circle and write that in there. Okay, well, what do you associate with that part of your topic? And then more lines come off and more bubbles. And then, you know, go back to the center. Okay, what else do you think of when it comes to your topic? And then do another line with another bubble. And the idea is that, you know, if you kind of follow that pattern, you generate more specific aspects of your topic. So let's say, for instance, um, you know, the example here on the PowerPoint, the example clustering is on the writing process. You know, that's what's in the center. That's our general topic. And we're going to try to figure out all the things that we associate with the writing process. Well, the first thing we associate with is pre-writing. You know, that's the first step. So that's our first, you know, bubble that comes off the center. And then what do we associate with pre-writing? And then we do those. But then there's also research um, as part of pre-writing. And research has its own little offshoots. And then, you know, we have our first draft. And then we have our revision. And then we have proofreading. And we have publishing. But what if we were only trying to write a single paragraph on something, you know, our um, opinion on that step of the writing process uh, or trying to explain the writing process and we, we only get one paragraph to do it in? Well, by clustering like this, we can take a look and say, okay, well, which part of the writing process do I actually want to focus on? Because trying to cover the whole process in one paragraph, it's not going to be adequate. It's not going to be, I'm not going to really get into anything. It's just going to be a real brief overview of everything. And that's not really going to help my reader at all. You know, so what can I do to really uh, provide some useful information to my reader? 
maybe I just need to focus on one part of the writing process for this paragraph. So we're going to go with revision. Okay, so our paragraph is going to be about the revision step of the writing process. And I look there at my little section of my web, my clustering. Um, what do I have coming off of revision? I have content, point of view, structure, and support. Well, maybe I need to free write a little bit more or cluster a little bit more. What do I know about those four aspects of the revision step? And decide, am I going to talk about all four, all four aspects of that revision step? Or am I going to choose maybe just three? The three that I think are most important or maybe the three that I think are often overlooked, that students often skip when they're revising, you know? And then those become sort of the main ideas of your paragraph. Your point has to do with the revision step of the writing process. Your your ideas, your three main ideas are gonna be, for instance, support structure and content right so clustering in this way can help you visually determine what your specific topic is going to end up being and what content what what ideas you're going to include under that point now when it comes to writing longer items like an essay for example you know, your essay is made up of multiple paragraphs. And this clustering technique works very much the same way when trying to come up with main ideas for a larger essay. So maybe your essay, because it's longer, could be about the whole writing process. And then you look at this and you realize, oh, I would have six main points to my essay, you know, and each section of the clustering would get its own section of the essay. So the visual aspect of clustering can really help you figure out how you're going to group your ideas, whether it's in a paragraph and you're just having to go with a smaller section of your clustering, or whether it's a whole essay and now you get to use more of your clustering, but now you can visually see how everything is grouped together. That is the goal of clustering. Um, once you have done your pre-writing, and you don't have to choose just one of those techniques, you could choose you know, a couple of them. Um, whatever ends up working for you, and, and it might be different for each thing you write. There might be some times where the topic comes to you immediately and you don't really have to spend as much time generating those ideas and coming up with with um, with topics and main points and subpoints. Other times you might struggle a little more and you might have to use two or even three of those techniques to to get you where you need to be to actually start writing the paragraph or the essay. So after you've done those pre-writing techniques, though, we're going to talk about paragraphs here, just a paragraph. You need to work on the point, which we call a topic sentence, and we're going to look more closely at those in the next module in week two. But a topic sen sentence is basically, it, it expresses the point that you want to make about the subject of your paragraph, specific point you want to make. Um, and then once you have a topic sentence in mind, then you can use a, an outline, a scratch outline to help you determine which ideas, which specific ideas you're going to include in that paragraph and what examples or details you're going to include for each of those three items. So if you look on slide 11, I have given you a template, a blank outline. So you start at the top, the very first item of, of the outline is your topic sentence. And then what's your first supporting idea for that topic? 
And then under that, what are your examples or details that you're going to use to explain that first point? And then what is your second idea about your topic? And then what examples or details are you going to provide to support that idea? And then what's your third idea? And what examples and details will you use to explain or support that third idea? And then what is your concluding sentence? How are you going to end the paragraph? Because you don't just want to end after, right after you've finished discussing the third idea and the examples and details to support that third idea. That just leaves us hanging. You need to come back and kind of round out the paragraph. We're going to talk about that later as well. But on the next slide, on slide 12, I've actually filled out one of these outlines for you. And I went back to chapter one and used that paragraph that we talked about my job in an apple plant. So his topic sentence was working in an apple plant was the worst job I ever had. So we know that is the specific focus. That is the point of this paragraph is explaining how or why it was the worst job he ever had. What is his first main idea about his topic? The work was physically hard. That's the first reason why the job was so horrible. And so how is he going to show us or explain to us that the work was physically hard? Well, he tells us about having to stack the cartons onto wooden skids and how each carton contained 25 pounds of apple juice. That's his supporting detail for that first main idea. And then his second main idea, the second reason why the job was so bad is that the pay was bad, you know, and how's he going to support that? How's he going to explain that? He only got paid $4.50 an hour plus 50 cents for the shift differential but he had to work 60 hours or more a week just to get by. That's his supporting evidence for his second main idea. Then he has his third supporting point. The third reason why the job was so bad is it, was hor it had horrible working conditions. What, is, what, what points are he, is he gonna use? What specific examples or details does he use to explain that third idea? He talks about the breaks and lunches. He talks about how it was horrible to load the dock, be on the loading docks in freezing temperatures, and how he didn't have anything in common with his coworkers, so it often made him feel isolated. Uh, so that's his third main idea and the specific reasons and examples to support that third idea. And then his concluding sentence, I didn't write the actual sentence, but the, the concept of his final sentence is that, you know, Apples are sweet, but the job was bitter. So it's kind of a play on the apples and the bitter there, the sweetness and the bitterness. Um, but he doesn't just leave us hanging after talking about the bad, the horrible working conditions. He gives us more of a formal end to the paragraph. So now that he has this little outline, he's thought to himself, okay, what's the third, or what's the first thing I want to say? Um, to explain why the job was so bad. Well, the work was hard, physically hard. How can I support that? How can I explain to them that the work was physically hard? And then he jots those ideas down. All right, what's the second thing that made my job so bad? The pay. The pay was just ridiculous. Okay, what can I say about the pay to make the reader understand why the pay was so bad? And he jots those ideas down in the outline. All right, what's my third reason for not liking the job? horrible working conditions. What are what supporting examples can I give to make my reader see that it had horrible working conditions? And he jots those ideas down. Now, the paragraph is practically half written. <laughs> now he just has to create sentences out of those ideas and connect them together. And he has a paragraph. And writing the paragraph is going to go so much faster and be so much easier because he worked through those steps and now has a clear, clear picture of what this paragraph is going to do, 
what it's going to look like once he's finished writing it. And it's smooth sailing from there on out. We will talk about how you can apply this same idea to essays later in the term, but it works the same exact way. Except in this case, instead of putting all of this information into one paragraph, being that the work was physically hard, that would be his first main point of the essay. And he would expand on that. You know, in the paragraph, he only gives us a sentence or two explaining how the work was physically hard. But in an essay, he could go into even more detail to show how the work is physically hard. And that would be its own full paragraph, right? And then he would move on to the second idea that the pay was bad. And instead of that just being a couple sentences within the paragraph, it would then get its own paragraph and he would get go into more detail about the pay. See, do you see how that works? When we're doing a paragraph, you know, we want to give specific examples and details, but we can't give too much because we're trying to contain it to one paragraph. But if you're using this outlining concept for an essay, each of those support elements are actually your body paragraphs. So it can be used either way um, to, to outline one paragraph or to outline a whole essay concept is exactly the same. And either way, if you do this step, the next step becomes so much easier. When you actually go to write it, it will come so much easier to you and it will flow so much better. So really use it to your advantage. All right. So to review what we have gone over so far, pre-writing techniques, have a working topic sentence, and it might change as you work through it a little more and come up with more evidence and, and start to organize things. That topic sentence might get tweaked a little bit, but have something to start yourself off with so that you are focused when you start generating your ideas for the supporting details. And then use that scratch outline to organize and put them all together in a way that makes sense, okay? Then you're ready to write a draft. So begin by looking over your pre-writing, looking over your topic sentence, and looking at your scratch outline. And like I said, then you just kind of create sentences out of each item on the outline and, and use transitions. And, and we're going to talk about those next week as well. You're going to use transitions to connect all the ideas so that the paragraph flows from the topic sentence all the way down to that concluding sentence and it just you just guide your reader right through it it's not choppy and kind of weird like that it just flows that's what that's what we're going for and you will achieve that so much easier because you have the outline to guide you all right um then you're going to revise we will spend more time talking about revision as well uh, here over the next couple of weeks. But the next step then is the revision step. And it's important that you keep in mind that there is a difference between revision and proofreading. So on slide 16, you know, we have revising content versus revising sentences. And Revising content is really more about exactly what it says, the content. Is the paragraph unified? Do you have a clear main point? Do you have a good topic sentence, a specific one? Do all of the supporting sentences truly support that main point? Um, is the paragraph supported? Do you have enough examples and details to support each of your ideas? Is it organized? Do you have a clear method of organization or is it jumpy all over the place? Um, do you use good transitions and connecting words? That's revising. That's looking at a little bit of bigger issues. Then you move on to revising the actual sentences in terms of like grammar and mechanics and spelling and punctuation. That is proofreading. So there is a difference. Most, a lot of times when you know you're asked, when students are asked to revise 
their writing, they go straight to grammar and mechanics and spelling and punctuation. And they don't even bother to make sure that what they've written is actually good and, and strong. And what if you've got some sentences in that paragraph that actually don't belong in there? They went off topic. But you spent, you know, you spent time correcting the grammar and the mechanics and the spelling and the punctuation on those sentences, but they shouldn't even be there in the first place. So it's important to not skip the revising part, the content part. Do that first. Save the sentence proofreading for the very last thing. So that's our writing process. Um, broken down into four steps. Remember the four steps correspond to the four bases. So if you do each step, you will have covered all your bases. Um, we talked about the first step and how there are four common pre-writing techniques. Um, and then when you move on to the second step, you can use those pre-writing techniques again, and you can throw in outlining to kind of bridge that step, as a bridge between steps one and three, because just because you generated ideas doesn't necessarily mean you're ready to, that you know how you want to organize them. The outlining will help you do that. And then the next step is writing your draft. And then the final step is revising. But remember revising for content first and then proofreading the sentences last. We are going to spend the next week or two going over each of these steps in more detail. So if this seemed quick and if it seemed brief, it was. <laughs> um, so we will look more closely at all four steps and then practice some of these things as well. But if you have any, you know, big questions right now uh, about the four steps and the four bases of the writing process, Feel free to let me know, otherwise you are free to move on to the homework for this week.